blocks away. That's what we want, right there. Now, for college football players, the dream begins in August on the practice field. One, and coaches two, help make that dream come true. Come on, John, keep the pressure on them. Well, you got to get the ball over your right foot and swing through it now. Quick, 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 set, throw. The dream is to become one of the finest collegiate football players in the country and one of the 24 athletes to earn the title of All-America. The dream will become reality for only a handful of athletes. Those who have been blessed with exceptional talent, skill, and the courage to prevail above all odds. By season's end, these players stand above the rest and have earned their place on the 1982 Kodak All-America team. Walter Camp picked the first All-America team, and so began a tradition that has become the yardstick for measuring greatness in college football. Today, the word All-America conjures up images of talented young men who epitomize excellence both on and off the field. This Kodak All-America team is a direct descendant from the Walter Camp legacy. In the 1980s, college football has witnessed a shift from the ball control offenses prevalent in the 70s to a more wide open passing game. The need for a quarterback who can throw the ball has never been more critical. And no one has done it any better than Stanford's John Elway, the 1982 All-America quarterback. His coach, Paul Wigan, knows he's one of the best. John Elway is, I think, probably as great a quarterback as I've ever seen. Just in the clear-cut sense of throwing the football, command on the field, just a competitive ability, the competitive spirit that he has, uh, the ability to move around in the pocket, all of those things, he's, if you're scaling 1 to 10, he's a 10 in all of those areas. Elway holds virtually every Pac-10 career record for passing and total offense. But football's just one of the sports he excels in. He's also a gifted outfielder who signed a contract with the New York Yankees. Soon, he'll have a difficult choice between baseball and football. You know, I love both sports so much. I've always said during fall I like football and during spring I like baseball. So it's been, it's always been a, uh, a thing where I really couldn't make a decision between the two. I'm going to have to make that decision next year, so I'm trying to just uh, put that off and forget about that until I have to make that decision because it's going to be tough enough as it is. The sport Elway will be playing next season is still undecided, but one thing is certain. Whatever path he pursues, John Elway will be a winner. The excitement generated by Michigan's number one, Anthony Carter, leaves spectators breathless and defensive backs baffled. As an All-America wide receiver, Carter is a threat to score every time he touches the football. During his four-year career, one in every four catches have meant six points for the Mays and Blue. Although quiet and reserved off the field, Carter is transformed into an explosive scoring machine once he steps onto the gridiron. This year, he outdistanced the Michigan career scoring record held for 42 years by the legendary Tom Harmon and indelibly etched his mark into the college record books. At 6'4", 224 pounds, Gordon Hudson fits the classic mold of great tight ends. Playing for Brigham Young, He's also had the good fortune to work with outstanding quarterbacks in Steve Young and All-America Jim McMahon. Although a strong blocker, Hudson grabs the headlines with his pass-catching ability. 
BYU's Gordon Hudson and Anthony Carter of Michigan, the 1982 Kodak All-America receivers. The American Football Coaches Association represents 4,500 member coaches encompassing all levels of football. All right, much better. The current president of the AFCA is Jim Ostendorf, for the past 24 years, head coach at Amherst College of Division II. The Coaches Association is involved with all areas of college football, including rules and regulations, player safety, and academic support. They also pick the All-America team. It's no question that picking an All-America team is really a, a very difficult job because there are quite a few outstanding players that do qualify. However, as football coaches with so many intersectional games, I think that our coaching association members get a great view of who are the best of the best. During the season, a committee of coaches representing each region of the country constantly evaluates All-America candidates, viewing hours of game films. In mid-November, a final ballot is held to determine the makeup of the Kodak team. And Nebraska center Dave Remington was a clear-cut choice for All-America honors again this season. The only back-to-back -back winner in the history of the Outland Trophy, Remington sets the standard of excellence for offensive linemen. Dave has an exceptional combination of size and strength and speed. Dave also is a very intelligent player. He has to make a lot of our line calls, so it's a very difficult thing because he has to know the snap count, he has to listen for audibles. Uh, it requires really a great combination of intelligence and, and physical ability. Coupled with that, a sense of determination and commitment to goals have made Remington the outstanding football player he is today. But he also sees the value of being equally dedicated to obtaining his degree. I've seen a lot of college football players that didn't get, get their degree and they're out uh, washing dishes and doing things I really don't want to do. So for me, it's, it's a way for me, if I don't make it in football, it'll, uh, it'll allow me to be successful in, in another, another area. With a 3.1 grade point average in management, Dave Remington is an academic All-American. At Southern Cal, the tradition of great tailbacks is nearly surpassed by their history of superior offensive linemen. This year, two USC players anchored positions on the All-America front line. Don Mosbart, a four-year starter at offensive tackle, joins guard Bruce Matthews to form the most formidable blocking combination in the Pac-10. The strongest man in college football plays for the Arkansas Razorbacks. He's number 66. Offensive tackle, Steve Court. Court can bench press 585 pounds. So just imagine what he can do with a 220-pound defensive lineman. Another college football strongman, Pittsburgh's Jimbo Coburn, made the switch two seasons ago from defense to the offensive line, and it's paid big dividends for the Panthers. Although the headlines are few for an offensive lineman, Coburn obviously enjoys his work. Mostly it's a journeyman's position, the offensive line, and you, and you do it over and over and over again so many times a game, but that certain maybe three or four times a game that you can make a great block that can spring somebody up, and that's what I, I really enjoy. Once again, here are the Kodak All-America Offensive Linemen. The 1982 All-America team place kicker, Chuck Nelson of the Washington Huskies, booted 28 field goals in a row this season. While leading the Huskies in scoring the past three years, Nelson has become the most consistent field goal and extra point man in the country. He can also hit from distance, 
as evidenced by the two 51-yard field goals made last season. Sometimes even his kickoffs can result in some unexpected offense for the Huskies. In addition to his talents on the gridiron, Nelson was an academic All-America in 1981 and is also a scratch golfer. Chuck Nelson, a Kodak All-America for 1982. Every year, millions of fans pack stadiums from coast to coast to witness the excitement of college football. Of course, spectators love the offense, but just as many fans are flipping for defense. The irresistible force meeting the immovable object. That is the essence of the battle. As driven as offenses are to move the ball upfield, the defenses are equally committed to stopping them in their tracks. At Arkansas, many an opponent has been stopped in his tracks by Billy Ray Smith, who has followed his father's footsteps to greatness. Basically, he started out playing uh, on a little league team when I was still playing with the Colts, and uh, he just kept playing and progressed through the years, and, and it looked like he had the talent to play, and he had the desire to play, and I think, you know, if you've got the talent and the desire, well, those are two most important things you can have. Billy Ray Smith Sr., number 74, starred for the Baltimore Colts for more than a decade. Surely some fatherly advice helped Billy Ray Jr. When I was back in ninth and 10th grade and I'd get some advice from somebody that had been in pro football and you know, try it out on some of these guys that maybe not had the same uh, benefit, a ninth grader using some, some tips that you know, an old pro would use, definitely gonna have an advantage. Today, defensive lineman Billy Ray Smith Jr has far surpassed his father's accomplishments at Arkansas and will be long remembered as a two-time Kodak All-America and one of the greatest defensive linemen in Southwest Conference history. When they want to get things stirred up at Arizona State, fans look to All-America Vernon Maxwell. With running back speed and quickness to go along with his size, Maxwell always seems to be where the action is, leading the Sun Devils in sacks this season. In the Southeastern Conference, opponents know it's not a wise choice to run at Alabama's Mike Pitts, number 81. At 6'5", 241 pounds, his size alone should be intimidation enough, but he also has the determination and skill of a true All-American. Texas Tech, Gabriel Rivera has been among the team leaders in sacks and tackles for losses for two consecutive years. It's no wonder why this talented nose guard is known as Senor Sack. Daryl Talley is an easygoing college senior who plays football at West Virginia. We set and die, die. But Saturday afternoons when Talley lines up alongside his teammates, his attitude is noticeably different. <laughs> Through his words and deeds, Talley has become the leader of Coach Don Nealon's Mountaineer defense. Daryl Talley's our Mr. Outside. He has everything that you look for in a football player. Great size, great strength. Uh, he's a great hitter. A very knowledgeable football player, a, a real attitude guy, and certainly one of the leaders of our defensive football team. Can play with anybody in America, and in my opinion, certainly will be a great professional football player someday. Tally is an incredibly gifted athlete with the size to rush the passer and speed to outrun backs and receivers. Once again, the Kodak All-America defensive linemen are Billy Ray Smith of Arkansas, Vernon Maxwell of Arizona State, Alabama's Mike Pitts, Gabriel Rivera from Texas Tech, and West Virginia's Daryl Talley.
Arizona linebacker Ricky Huntley is a member of the All-America team for the first time in 1982. A native of Petersburg, Virginia, he has obviously found a home with the Wildcats, leading the team in quarterback sacks last season. Marcus Merrick follows in the tradition of great Ohio State linebackers. As an honor student majoring in natural resources, Merrick has not missed a game in three years for the Buckeyes and is the second leading tackler in team history. Once again, college football's top linebackers. The defensive backs play one of the most demanding positions in college football. One mistake will undoubtedly mean six points for the opposition. But this year's All-America secondary looks practically unbeatable. Business major Mike Richardson is the all-time Arizona State interception leader. Equally gifted at playing the run, he reads and reacts to a play as quick as anyone in the country. At Alabama, Coach Bear Bryant continues his tradition of turning out great All-Americans. This year, defensive back Jeremiah Castile joins teammate Mike Pitts on the Kodak team. Castile, who holds the Alabama career record for interceptions, is called pound for pound the best player in the SEC by Coach Bryant. All-America Terry Hoke from Georgia has been taking college courses since he was in the ninth grade and has earned a 3.8 grade point average majoring in genetics. Although only a junior, Hogue was one of the nation's leaders in interceptions this season and is considered among the most dangerous deep backs in the country. Opponents will learn not to throw the ball in his direction. Terry Kennard was an integral part of the Clemson defense that took the Tigers all the way to the national championship in 1981. If possible, he's performed even better in 1982, causing headaches for the opposition and leading the Tigers in tackles this season. No element of college football is more important than the kicking game. This year, the team officially recognized these positions for the first time. Vanderbilt's Jim Arnold is the best punter in the country, averaging more than 46 yards per kick. In his career, Arnold has punted for more than six and a half miles and was a major factor in the Commodores gaining their first bowl berth since 1974. Of all the athletes on the field, it's the running backs that capture the hearts and imagination of the fans. Elusive, powerful, swift, explosive, all qualities inherent to the men who carry the football in a never-ending quest for the goal line. Nebraska's Mike Rozier is one of only two underclassmen in the All-America offensive backfield and the Big H Offensive Player of the Year. A sprinter on the Cornhusker track team in the offseason, he runs the 40 in 4.5 seconds. And with his senior season still ahead of him, he's already number two on the all-time rushing list at Nebraska. All-America running back Eric Dickerson is one half of SMU's Pony Express offense and knows what it takes to be a great running back. Well, a great running back, he can make a play when there is no play. Say if it's third and one and this is from the goal line and this is this is it you know the last play of the game i mean when a running back gets the ball and he can and he, he can get it in you know when I, all odds are against him that makes him a great running back eric dickerson has become the all-time leading rusher in southwest conference history surpassing the likes of dope walker curtis dickey and earl campbell eric dickerson all-America running back.
all-time NCAA freshman rushing leader. University of Georgia single season and career rushing leader. Most valuable player, 1981 Sugar Bowl. SEC player of the year. This is Herschel Walker an individual possessing the unique ability to run like no other person in the history of college football. A lot of people always ask me what kind of runner am I, and I tell them I'm a surprising runner. Uh, I never let you know what I'm going to do. I let you decide what you want to do. If you want to tackle me, it's your, it's your problem. If you don't, that's not for me because I don't want to get hit neither. For all his success on the gridiron, Herschel knows there is more to life than football and is concentrating hard on his academics. Well, I'm working on a degree in uh, law, and that's going to be a kind of difficult degree, but then I think when I'm through with football, I like to go into the Secret Service or maybe the FBI. That'll be something I think I can cherish for a long time because football is a small portion of my life. I enjoy the game, but then I do many other things because I have the ability to do them. God has blessed me with the ability to do many things, and I try not to just stick with one thing but do a variety of things. In addition to his All-America status in football, Walker is also a world-class sprinter, a green belt in karate, and a serious poet. This uniquely talented young man is perhaps best known by his football coach, Vince Dooley. There's three things that make him very special. This uh, tremendous combination of size and speed, which in itself uh, is the reason that perhaps separates him from any other uh, athlete or uh, running back that I've ever been around. But in addition to that, he also has those intangible qualities that makes for an All-American. Despite this tremendous exposure that he gets, he has the complete respect of his teammates and of his coaches. And to me, that pretty well sums up Herschel Walker, who is a great athlete, but also a very special person. Now, once again, here is the 1982 Kodak All-America team. For those 24 players, the dream has become a reality. With talent, skill, hard work and courage. They have reached the pinnacle of success in college football. They are the best of the best. The 1982 All-American.